to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where after a, a brief soiree yesterday into the world of pencil puzzles, we are most certainly back on Sudoku today with a puzzle called Serial Box, a uh, serial spelt with an S by 2 to 10th. Now, 2 to 10th, I think, is a fantastic constructor. If you go and look at their page over on Logic Masters Germany, it's just riddled with enormous ratings. Um, and the testers say this one is an absolutely brilliant puzzle. It is a sort of Renban uh, X hybrid. <laughs> and I'll read you the rules in just a second. I haven't got much news today, actually. The main thing is to say a very well done to a couple more of you who've managed to complete the Star Wars Sudoku hunt, which is currently available for all our patrons over on Patreon. So well done to RJ White and Ferdinand Stam. Brilliant solving. Um, and yeah, do, do check that out. And if you're stuck on the hunt, get yourselves over to the Discord server and join the other 24,000 people who frequent the Discord server and the Patreon chat channel there uh, is full of people who are kind enough to lend a hand and even the puzzle, well, the hunt's author, Peter C. Hayward, is there too, and that there's no better man to get tips from, let me tell you. Um, anyway, that said and done, let's get to Serial Box. It's a bit strange, this. Why is the capital B and a capital X? I don't... Um, I pro oh, I suppose the X is for the X's. Why? I suppose, yeah, okay, maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just because there's so many X's in the grid. Anyway, here are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Purple lines must contain a set of consecutive non-repeating digits. So these are Renban lines. So that means, uh, I don't know, let's think about how this Renban line could look. Say that was a six and this was a five. Then we would know this square could be a four to make a consecutive sequence of four, five, six, or it could be a seven to make a consecutive sequence of five, six, seven. So either of those would be possible. Um, cells separated by an X uh, must contain digits summing to 10, and not all possible x's are given, so this could, for example, be a 4-6 pair, that would work. Um, and it's absolutely fine for other dominoes in the puzzle to also contain digits summing to 10. Just because there's no x there doesn't mean these can't sum to 10, they absolutely can. Um, and the clue outside the grid gives the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal, so that diagonal there sums to 48 which unfortunately is looking surprisingly average at first blush. These digits may repeat if allowed by other rules. So in order to get to 48, we're allowed to repeat digits along the diagonal, but obviously you couldn't make those two squares a five, for example, because those fives would break the rules of Sudoku. They're in the same box. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play let's get cracking and i will say that unfortunately my dinner is in the oven today um life's all over the place at the moment <laughs> so I, I i am under a little bit of time pressure uh, and if i do have to stop for my dinner it, it it's it's not my fault it's not my fault believe me um anyway let's have a look what have we got we've got some long renban lines here so now hmm I don't know much about four cell Renban lines, but I do, I don't know what I mean is I don't know much mathematically because uh, some Renban lines like a three cell Renban lines are beautiful mathematically because they must contain digits that are divisible by three. And you can see that because if you think about the lowest number on this string, let's call that X, then we could express this algebraically or the sum of the, the digits on this Renban line is x, uh, x plus one and x plus two. Uh, so add up those digits, you get x, you get three x plus three. Now three x plus three is obviously divisible by three. Um, I and mean, you can see that as well if you, if you want to slot some numbers in there, let's just put two, three and four in, two plus three plus four equal nine. So unsurprisingly, mathematics works. But a four cell Renban line is different. Um, because the sum of a four cell Renban line is four X plus six, which is, well, we know it's an even number, I suppose, but we could have worked out it's an even number anyway, because if we think about its nature, it's going to, <laughs> given it's a set of four consecutive digits, it has to contain two odds and two evens. And if you sum two odds and two even numbers together, you will get an even number. So we could have deduced that anyway. Um, hmm. Okay, right. I think we can limit this square, though. Because let's think about what we can actually leave out. 
of these consecutive sequences. Would it be possible, for example, to leave a 2 out of these 8 squares and put a 2 here? Well, clearly not, because now we have a terminal problem with the digit 1. We can't put 1 on either of these lines. But the same is true of 3. If we put 3 up here, we can't put 1 and 2. In order, where are we going to hide the 1 and the 2 in the column? They have to be consecutive, so you need a 3 on this line. That just doesn't work. And the same will be true of 4. With 1, 2, and 3 now, this, this, could, this could never be completed. So I think that in the corner, we're going to have to have either a 1. Oopsie. I need, oh, yeah, I want to be in corner pencil. Sorry, I want to be on those pencil marks. Either a 1, which will allow 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8, either, but we don't know which way up they go, or a 5, and then we could just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 in some order. We don't know which way up again, or 9 here. And that will allow the first eight digits to be divided up between the two Remban lines. So we've worked out this digit is a 1, 5, or a 9. Um, okay. So... How do we make more progress here? Can we use can we use mod three on this row? Um, we've got those are mod three, so these are mod three. Oh, nearly okay. This digit's a bit restricted. So, so coming back to what I was talking about before about um, mathematics, the mathematics of a Remban line, and I'm going to combine that with the secret. Now, the secret is something I only tell very special people to me, and that includes everybody watching this video. So, if we think about the contents of a correctly completed row of a Sudoku, or indeed a column of a Sudoku, or a box of a Sudoku, we know because of the rules of Sudoku that a, comp a correct row will contain the digits 1 to 9 once each. Now, if you add the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. Now, 45 is divisible by 3. Now, we know that a 3-cell Remban line is divisible by 3, so those 6 cells there are definitely divisible by 3, which means that in order to preserve the overall mod 3 nature of the row, the overall row being divisible by 3, these 3 digits are divisible by 3. Now, 10 is definitely not divisible by 3. So what do we have to add to 10? to make these three digits divisible by three, well, either two or five or eight. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to help us very much. Um, odd, odd, odd. Ah, okay, but we can limit this digit as well. This is lovely so far. I actually, one of my favorite types of puzzles are Ren, Ren bands that use mathematics. I think they're really elegant. Now, if we think about a two cell Ren band line, we can think about it. It must contain an even and an odd digit because it's a consecutive pair. Therefore, it's, its sum is odd. So that's an odd sum, that's an odd sum, and that's an odd sum. Three, if you add three odd numbers together, you get an odd number. Then add an even number to those because 10 is even and you'll get an odd number. Now, overall, 45 is odd, so this square must be even to preserve the parity, and therefore that's not 5. Now this x isn't 2, 8, look, and neither is that one. Um, so if that's 2... Oh, that's right. That's, that's ridiculously clever. Right, okay. I now know the contents of this, this uh, domino. Because whether this is 2 or 8, the 1 and the 9 get hidden from their consecutive, uh, the, their consecutive neighbours. So imagine this was 8. Right, where, where do we put the 9 in the column then? You can't put 9 on the lines because you'll need an 8 with it to be consecutive. So the 9 would hide in here. But if, on the other hand, this is a 2, you get exactly the same problem with the 1 in the column. So there must be a 1 or a 9 on the x. Now, once there's a 1 or a 9 on the x, there's a 1 and a 9 on the x, because we must be summing to 10. 
So that is rather beautiful and completely useless, it seems. Um, Hmm. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, we haven't got the same thing, have we? Oh, we have. No, we have got this. We have got the same thing. We've got. Uh, yes, it's 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 the same. Yeah. Look at row row one now. So uh, let's imagine this was a two. Now, where am I going to put the one? I can't put the one on a line, so I have to put the one in the end. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, and that's oh, this is this is incredibly beautiful. So we must have one nine on this X, which makes this square a five, and that's our first digit. So now, now the nature of the four cell Remban lines is a one, two, three, four, ah, and a six, seven, eight, nine, and that immediately gets my spider senses tingling. Because think about the juxtaposition of that restriction with the fact that we've got X's in the grid. Yeah, so for example, the, the, th the thing about an X domino is it must always have a low digit, i.e. a digit selected from 1, 2, 3, and 4, and a high digit, i.e. a digit selected from 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this Remban line must contribute a digit to this X. Well, it can't contribute those three digits because they're in the box with it. So that cell is on that X, which probably deserves colouring. Um, but I don't know which one. I'm actually going to borrow from Mark's. I've seen Mark do this in some of his solves recently with colouring, where he, um, you know, he knows one of these is green, but he doesn't know which one. He gives it a, a grey flash, which I actually I can barely see, but he seems to be able to. Um, Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, how do we do that? What do we do now? I'm not going to look at this 48. I would have looked at the 48 if it wasn't so close to 45, which is, you know, there are nine digits on the diagonal. The average digit in a Sudoku is a five. So we would expect if this was a totally boring diagonal it to sum to 45 and it very nearly does so I think this is some sort of late disambiguator which is probably going to prove to be famous last words now I've said it um, so what goes on this Renban with the 5 Uh, I suppose we've got to be a little bit careful actually because I've got to make sure I can still fill this Ramban as well. So I've got to leave a... Oh, let's just think about this. If that's a 2... Yeah, so in... Okay, so this 5 has to take... These two digits here have to take the total, it, or not the total, they have to take the digits heading towards whatever we put in there. If that's an 8, this would have to be a 6 and a 7. If that's a 2, this has to be a 3 and a 4. In order that we can leave the space, a 3, a three, spell con three cell, or a three, a 3 consecutive number space that we can put on the other Renban line. Yeah, okay, so that's not actually... Is it helpful? So these two digits are either, if that's a 2, it's a 3 and a 4. If that's an 8, it's a 6 and a 7. So 3, 4 or 6, 7 on this line. 3, 4 or 6, 7. So this X now can't be, yeah, yeah, because, because they pair up. So yes, so you now can't put 3, 7 on this line because then you couldn't put you're either going to have a problem with the 3 or the 7 up here. Same with 4, 6. So this X line is 1, 2, 8 or 9 now. And whatever's on this X line must have some relationship with this line, mustn't it? Because if this line is full of low numbers, for example, we would need to... Oh, that's my, no, that's not my dinner. Um, if it's on this line, 
So if this was 1, 9 or 2, 8, you can see that what this would have to repeat here because you couldn't have it here. So, um, so what does that mean? That means there is a repeated digit between those dominoes. Ah, okay, and that can't go here because then it would reflect here and there would be a clash in the row. This is very peculiar, actually. It's, it's a little bit hard to, to visualize, but I think we can, to show you what I mean here, let's imagine this was one nine. And let's imagine, now this is either a sequence of high digits or a sequence of low digits. Let's just imagine for the sake of exposition, it's a set, a set of low digits. It doesn't change the conclusion. Now we're gonna have a one in this domino. So we have to put a one in one of those three squares by Sudoku. Now, if we put the one here, you'll get a nine here and it will clash. And you can hopefully see it's exactly the same if we put nine here. And if we try and put the nine there, we'll get a one here, which will clash. So what we cannot do here is to put whatever is the repeated digit between these dominoes in that cell. So it must go in this square. So this is really awkward, though. So there is a repeated digit between these dominoes. But we don't know which one it is, so all of these have to be flashed. And we've got an excess of flashing going on. Um, in what way could that be useful? That could be useful if That could be useful if I can force a five on this ren ban. Because if I can force a five on the ren ban, given it's a four cell ren ban, it couldn't have a one on it, could it? Because if it was five and then it just headed straight down, four, three, two, yeah, it could never have an extreme digit on it. So how do I force a five into this domino? I've got to do that. You can nearly do it, actually. You really can nearly do it. Because where does the five go? The five in box four can't go in those squares or in the X by Sudoku. So, so yeah, if there's a five in one of those three cells, that would force a five into this domino because you couldn't put the five in the X. So the only, the only valve for the five that allows the pressure off it is to put it here. Five, five, and then that would, yeah, that would release the pressure on it. So why isn't that a five? It probably is a five, actually, because that's on a Remban line and five on a Remban line is really, it makes the Remban line fairly easy to fill, doesn't it? Um, bobbins. Um, what about the other digit in this X then? So one of them we know goes here, but one of them must have a friend down there. Ah, now, hang on, can that actually go there, though? Because that's going to... No, for, for, it's, yeah, this is interesting. So one of these digits is not on this line. I don't know which one it is. Let's just, I'll just make them both orange. Now, orange must have, must repeat in one of those squares. Now, if orange was here... Now I've got a problem. Oh, this is actually beautiful. This is really clever. If I do that and put the orange here. Yeah, um, okay. Sorry, I'm being very inarticulate here, but I'm just trying to make sure that I agree with what I'm about to say. Yeah, okay. Ha could this be orange is the first question. And the answer to that is no. Because if this is orange, we know that this is the blue version and it sees itself in the column. So that's not orange. Now, can these be orange? And the answer to that is also no, but for a rather beautiful reason. Because that would mean that these, these two squares added up to 10, either with a 1, 9 or a 2, 8, and they can't fit together on a four cell Remban line. So that just doesn't work. That is not orange. So orange is down here. 
And now orange is in one of those three. Now can we force it off that one? Yes, you oh this is this is so it's ridiculously intricate, but it's beautiful. If that is orange, then we know because orange goes with blue here that blue would have to go here and now it clashes here because we know that blue is repeated in this domino already because this is the low domino or the, not the low domino it's the low quadruple domino tetromino or te something um, and yeah and now we can't put whatever this digit is that's orange anywhere on no that's blue anywhere on here it's impossible so that doesn't work now that all means the orange by Sudoku goes here and orange is not five is it is orange five no orange is not orange is clearly not five orange is one two eight or nine so now can I come back to fives again so now yes now five must be in one of can five be here no, five's too far away. Even if that's a two or an eight, three, four would be as close as you could get to five or six, seven, that's not five. So five is in one of those two cells and five is not on the X, five is there. So this is a five blue pair and that's beautiful for many reasons. But the first reason it's beautiful is that blue now can't be a one, well, this domino can't be a one nine pair because that would force a one or a nine onto this domino with a five on a four cell Rembrandt, which is not gonna work. So this is, this is a two or an eight with a five, which means that domino now is a two eight domino. That is a two or an eight. I've got a two five eight triple in column three. And what else have I got? Ah, no. Yes, hang on, yes. What's on this Remban? I was about to say it's interesting but the fact it's got a five in it means its parity can change from blue to orange as we go through the five, but it can't because the digits here, one of the digits is so extreme. It's either an eight or a two going with a five. So these have to fill the gap. If this is two, five, that has to be three, four, and it has to be a blue three, four. And if that's five, eight, that has to be six, seven, and it's a blue six, seven. So these two digits are either three, oh, this is so clever, look at this. This is either three, four or six, seven. Oh, good, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd noticed already that this then couldn't be three, seven or four, six, but I've just seen we've got a one, nine in the column. So that has to be a two, eight pair. Now I've got a two, eight pair in row three and row four. What's that doing? Oh, I see what it's doing. It's an invitation to color the twos and the eights, isn't it? Because now, can't I work out which one of these is blue? Because if that's a two eight pair and that's a two eight pair and one of these is a two eight, it can't be this one. So that loses its color and this loses its gray flash. That is blue and it's a two or an eight. Out of absolutely nowhere, that's a blue two or eight that's an orange two or eight, that fixes that this must be a blue two or eight and that must be an orange two or eight. Good grief. Now, do I know what that is now? I'm not sure. know whatever that is this is filling the gap so if that's a two that's a three four 
Um, ah, okay, but then I couldn't put I couldn't put three four on the blue line then, because there wouldn't be room for it in just this cell. So if Hang on a sec, let me just think about this. If this is two, this is three, four. If this is eight, this is six, seven. And whatever this domino contains can't go on this line. So this must go down there. Those two squares, I think, are orange. Now, does that mean that's orange? I think it does because it's the same side, isn't it? Yeah, because we're heading, these two are heading towards that. So this is also orange. These must therefore all be blue. So these are not blue. What am I doing? What am I, I know what I'm doing. I'm confusing everybody, but I need to unconfuse you. So what I've been doing, I was looking at this string of digits here and saying, OK, so this is sort of my orange line, if you like. Whereas actually that was this orange was referring to this 28. So what we need to do is to just back up a little bit. We're still the logic's still good, I think, but I need to address my colouring a little bit. Because what I want to do is I want to say one of these lines is sort of, well, it's whatever it is, it's a colour, which can't be, I don't want to pollute my 2.8 colourings. So I'm going to have to come up with a different colour. I'll make those yellow and I'll make this. What's going to work here? Maybe I don't really want to pollute red and, oh, purple. I've got purple available. I may even take that orange flash out of there because that orange flash is one of three places for the 2.8 and I think that's a bit of an overkill. So we'll go with purple and yellow. Now what I was saying about the top row is that these two squares can't now be yellow so they must be purple and that must be purple and those must be yellow. And now Now what? Now what do we do? Um, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I've not got a Scooby-Doo. Uh, have we learnt anything useful from this? I don't know. Um, Or can we do something over here? Twos and eights. There must be a yellow two. Uh, I tell you what would be nice as well, and that's if I can purplify these or yellowify them. Can I do that? Yeah, yes, I can, because I know that blue is, the, is a yellow one. So they're yellow, and orange is purpled. So, I don't know, I don't know what that means. This Renban line must be purple. Yes, that's a sensible conclusion, because this Renban line, whatever it is, two or eight, it can never switch, switch across the five boundary. It's too far away on a three cell Renban. So if this was a two, these have to be selected from purple digits. And if it's an eight, it's still the same. So this is purple. Now, ah, now I've got four purples in box one, and that's that's my quota of purples because it's the same number of purples as there. So that must be yellow. Do I know what that is? No, is the short answer. Oh, it's not. No, I do know what it is. That's got to be a one or a nine. I think that's right, because if we think about the, the nature of purple, <laughs> purple, whether it's, yeah, whatever, whatever it is, 
there is a purple digit that is a, a very extreme digit, a 1 or a 9. And this cell sees every other type of purple digit apart from 1 or 9. So it must itself be 1 or 9. Which means this square, now look at this. Whatever this square is, it must be sequential with a 1, a 2, therefore a 3, or with a 9, an 8, and therefore a 7. Therefore that's not 3 or 7. This is 4 or 6, therefore that is 3 or 7. So now this square, which, which carries over to this domino, can't be those two. So it could be 4, 6 or 1, 9. Um, so I know that there's a purple digit in one of those two. I know this, this, oh, this is, a, right, this is a 4-6 pair now. Sorry, this has probably been available for a while, but what, what domino can this be? It can't be 1, 9, 2, 8, or 3, 7, so that's 4-6. So one of these is purple, one of these is yellow. Don't think we're going to know which until we get some 4 6 itch over in this region. Ah, that's not 4 6 now. So that's 1 9. Ah, so that means this, this is a 1 9 domino. Oh, this is really beautiful. Honestly, I mean, the, the, every deduction here is like, it's surprising and elegant. Um, but now look at this, this column. I've got a purple 1 9, so that must be... That must be a yellow one nine. And I'm just pausing there because that, that means that this one can't be the green, the green purple thing. So that I think acquires the mantle of yellowness and it's a one nine. This one acquires the mantle of purpleness and loses its gray flash. <laughs> it's all quite clear, isn't it? Not. Um, now. What does that mean? I don't know is the answer. So we've now got yellow here. I suppose this is going down there. So with this could do with a yellow flash as well because this digit is undoubtedly yellow. One of these is a five. So both of these are yellow to complete the yellow quota for box seven. So one of these is yellow and one of these is five. So that sort of should look like that, I think. And one of these is purple and one of these is yellow and we don't know which. And we've sort of colored quite a lot there. We've got, we've got a two, five, eight, triple, a four, six pair and a one, nine pair in this column. So that must be a three or a seven. And these squares here are one, four, six or nine the yellow iterations of those but again I don't really see how we're going to know which is which uh, oh but that means that must be a three or yeah okay yeah we need a yellow three seven that's the only place that can go so i've got a three seven oh i've got a three seven and a two eight pair now in row four which is that useful three seven two eight so i can't put ah yeah yeah got it right what i was going to say is because there's a two or an eight here um the digit that this is not the extreme digit that this is not it's a one or a nine is shielded and can't go on here because you'd need to accompany it with its with its next most extreme digit, which is no longer longer available. But of course, whatever this is not, it, this is, and that can't go there either. So this digit can't go in those three squares in row four and has to go there. Those two digits are the same. Now, what I would love to do is to color those in. I know, well, I know this is a one nine. Therefore, oh, I can, I can, oh, yes, I can color them because, of course, this is consecutive with this and is a 2 8, 
and therefore it's not that. So it's per that's purple, and it's therefore orange as well, because that got the extra, the extra little nickname, didn't it, as a result of these these this stuff over here. But that means that this is the same side as purple. So it's purple, which means that's yellow and that's purple. And that means that's yellow and that's purple. Um, so these three squares now are fours, fives and sixes. And that's a consecutive sequence. So there must always be a five on this domino. That's not got a five on it. This is a four or a six. Uh, don't know what to do with that, to be honest. Okay. Um, <laughs> where do we look now? We've got a one nine pair in this column. So this can't be one. Can we get this X? I'm just thinking this square can't be one or nine. So it's not a one nine and Whatever this is, it's either a 3, 4 or a 6, 7, ruling out 3, 7 and 4, 6 from this X. So this X is 2, 8. This is one of the best puzzles of this type I've ever seen. It, the logic in it is ridiculous. Um, so now that's, that's the yellow version of 2, 8. So, oh, so that, oh, this is gorgeous, right. So that's a yellow. And therefore, this one can't be the yellow 28, which means that that one must be a 5, I think. And therefore, it loses all its color. This one is now loses its gray flash and is not a 5. That should, I suppose, acquire its blue flash just to make sure it's the same as its, its other friends that are 2 and 8. Now, that one must be the purple orange version. Ah, we, I was wondering if we could do Sudoku, but we can't. Um, uh, can we get 2, 8? Can we get 2, 8 in here? The blue, um, the blue 2, 8 is what I'm thinking about. Blue 2, 8 is not there and it's not here. So blue 2, 8 is in one of those squares. If blue 2, 8 is there. Oh, right, yeah, no, that's this is not blue 2, 8. Because if it was, if it was the blue yellow 2, 8, this digit is consecutive with it so it needs to either be a yellow one or a yellow three or, or, or the other ones, you know, yellow seven or yellow nine, both of which see that square. So this could not have a consecutive partner. So that is not two eight. That is two eight and gets its blue moniker and that one loses its thing. So these two squares now are the other yellow digits. So they are three, four, six, and seven, or the yellow versions thereof. Okay. Uh, this diagonal, no, that's still looking a little bit empty to me. Um, okay. What on earth do we do now? We shall... What clues have we not used? We've not used this. Which has to be a consecutive pair. I've not got a clue what I can do with that. Um, this digit I can see can't be one, two, eight or nine. So that square there is three, four, five, six or seven. But I don't think I know its color. 
Oh, in fact, the same is true there. I've just noticed that there's, there's a purple and a yellow 2, 8 looking at that square as well. And there's the 1, 9 pair. So this is also 3, 5, uh, 6, 7, not 8. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. Um, hmm. don't know about that and my phone is going nuts oh, oh yeah okay I'm gonna have to probably have a brief pause here let me just see if I can find something else so that I've got something to look forward to when I finish my dinner I hate the thought of leaving the puzzle sort of you know on a cliffhanger um, let me just have a think about this we could We don't know. I don't think we know. We've got purple. We've got a purple two or eight. Oh, so we can probably work out which digit the five goes with then in this column. Let me just think about that. So if we've got just imagine, let's just actually, let's just put some options in. We don't know whether this is one, two, or whether it's um, nine, eight, but it's one of those things. So if that's right, these consecutive diff, diff digits now would have to be a three, four, which would be a purple three, four. Then a five and a yellow six. So five is going with yellow, whatever, whichever way up it goes. It could be, it could be a yellow four or a yellow six, but it's definitely a yellow digit. So it goes yellow six, and then it would be a seven, eight pair, which would the equivalent would be a two, three pair on the other side. So we know that five goes with yellow. Five is not there. Um, sorry about this. I'm stuck on this. I think can't. I don't think. Therefore, I can put five here, can I? Because if I put five there, I know that the yellow, the yellow digit that would accompany a five is in that domino. So that's not got a five on it. So the five, five is now in one of three places in column nine. So if that's a five, you've got to make this square a yellow four, six, and that looks very doable, I think. And you'd have to put a five in there. Now, if this is a five on one of the, is that yellow or do we not know? I don't think we know what that is. Do we know what these colors are? Don't know, I'm not sure. Um, No, okay, sorry, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to leave that pencil marking in. Um, okay, so what else can we do? Can we get the position of the... What about the two of the eight? The, the, the blue-yellow digit, is that gettable? That's not on that domino there. So the, oh, this is getting really complicated. The blue, yellow, two, eight. Can't go on this domino. If it goes on that domino, doesn't it have to go with the three or the seven? Yes, it does. It does, doesn't it? If this, yeah, where do you put the blue, 
or the, the yellow is a better description, but it's this one that has the blue flash. Where do you put that in this column? If you put it here, it's got to be accompanied by the yellow three or the yellow seven, which is in that domino and not there. So it can't go on there. It can't go there by Sudoku. So it's here and that's that place is the five in the column and the, the yellow four six, which means that is a four six and that is yellow, which means that that is a three seven. And this was the, this is a two eight yellow and a 3-7 yellow, both yellow, which is probably important. One of those has the blue flash, but we don't know which one. And now that must be purple. Oh, I see, that's the counterpart of those squares now. So that is 3, 4, 6 and 7. Oh, oh, no, ne oh, nearly so nearly a, um, a quadruple here. Whoa, so nearly. Five must be in one of those two squares in box eight. So if that was a five, you go five here and a five here, and that would give us our quadruple I'm not sure if that's possible or not if I limit if I get rid of five from there this is either three four or six seven to be consecutive uh, I'm not sure whether that works or not I have a horrible feeling it doesn't can't quite get my head around how these this quadruple unwinds, but I'm not certain. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, if there's no five on this domino, you get a three, four. Six seven quadruple. That is either three four or six seven. So if it was if it was six seven just for the sake of it, that would be a three four purple. That would be a three and that would be a four. Maybe that's okay. Uh, maybe that's okay. And I, although I'm not sure. I think it might be okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, God, God, I hate abandoning puzzles or not abandoning them, but I hate stopping puzzles because I lose my train of thought if I do that. And I think I've stored up a lot of stuff here that I need to to capitalize on. Um, I think that I think this is this is making me think that there's a, a problem with this. Maybe rather than trying to prove there's not a five on it, I should try and prove there is a five on it. If there was a five on that, there would be a five here, a five here. Oh, that would be fair. A five here would be fascinating with this because then this couldn't change its parity. And that would all be the same colour, and that colour would have to be purple. Whoa! Because you couldn't have five yellows in the box. That looks interesting. So how do we do that then? Is there a five on there? There is something nagging me about these, these digits. If there is, I can't quite see it. I can't quite see it, but I don't, my, my brain is telling me this doesn't work. Why doesn't it work, Simon? Use your brain. If 
There it is. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work if there's no five on here, does it? The problem is you get, you end up needing this digit on that Ren ban, I think. Let's just think about this. If there's no five, yeah, in fact, probably though, I, th I don't think it works. I think you need this digit on this Ren ban, but I think the only way I'm going to convince myself this is true is if we, if we, if we try and work it out. So if there's no five here and this is three, four, six, seven, we then have a choice. This is either a three, four pair or a six, seven pair. If this is three, four, that has to be seven. And this has to be six. And now it looks like it works again and I'm going crazy. But no, no, it doesn't work because these are not the same. These can't be the same. So that's there. Yeah, that's what it was. My, that's why my spider senses were tingling. These cannot be the same on the same side of the line. A seven and a six need to be on dip. You know, the sevens have to be either low or high. The sixes have to be the opposite. So that doesn't work. That doesn't work. There's definitely a five on here. How do we prove that more elegantly? If there is, yeah, okay. Yes, we can, ask, the way to think about this is what is the odd digit on this domino? It can't be a one or a nine full stop and it can't be yellow whatever yellow three seven is so the only if there is no five on there the only odd digit it can be is purple three seven now if it's purple three seven this square is purple four six but what do you accompany um this uh this purple three seven with on this domino it's either purple four six which it can't be that's in the row or it's purple two eight which it can't be because that's in the in the box already so that's another way of thinking about it. Overall though, there is a five on here. There's a five down here. There is a five not in there anymore. And there is a five here in row four. And now I just want to note this, which now this is a four or a six, it cannot have a five on the Remban. So it must just either go straight down four, three, two, or straight up six, seven, eight. It's the same color is the key. And it can't be yellow because there's already two yellows. So it must be purple. And look at this, there's a 2 8 oh, I don't want to stop, but my dinner's gonna be going. So we can do that, and now I'm gonna pause, but I think I'm getting somewhere. Okay, I'm back, I'm fed and watered. So, and I think I just got this triple. So let's have a look at what we can do with that. And the first thing I'm seeing is that streak there must be these digits mustn't it because they're just the same digits so that is a purple streak in column seven um now what does that do if anything let's have a think purple um <laughs> i don't know i don't know what it does it I suppose, right, we need two more yellow digits in box six, so they've got to be yellow. Um, now, what else can we see here? Do, ah, if we know that's four six, that must be yellow four six. Is that interesting? Yeah, may, maybe. Oh, in fact, look here, this, yeah. This is a bit hard to see because I think I've labeled these blue, um, whereas they should be yellow as well, shouldn't they? Because that's what we proved when looking at that REM band before. So that four six is ruling four and six out of that square, which is ruling it into this square. Whoops, uh, four, yeah, that's, that's, that looks right. The four sixes are offset. Um, Does that matter somehow? I don't know. Oh, I see four, six, four, six, four, six. These shouldn't have blue stripes. Um, three, seven, three, seven. Is that the three, seven? 
or is that the 2 8? I don't know if we know that. And we've got to put oh, we've got to put 1 9 as well. Ah uh, no, that can go in two places in box 8. So that's not quite good enough. Can we place one yellow 1 9 in box 5? Mm, don't think so. There must be a Oh, okay, there must be a 4-6, a yellow 4-6 in this domino, which is going to meet its friend over here. And that's not going to be helpful. Um, okay, so we're stuck. I'm not terribly surprised. How can we get unstuck? That's our next challenge. Have we got any rows and or columns or boxes, I guess? where we have an absolute multitude of ye oh, yellow digits across the middle. Hang on. Have I got four there? One? Oh, no, I haven't. Because this one could be a five, you rotten thing. Uh, oh, and the, the, yeah, I'm, I'm getting confused with all my flashing <laughs> of all things to be confused by. But because, yeah, because this is a purple yellow flashed, we don't know what the order is here. So although at first blush I thought I had four yellows in row five, I don't at all. So that's not helpful. Um, okay, but here's a small point. Yellow four six must be in this domino, so it's not there, which means that that's a three seven and this is a four six. Does that help us? Yeah, that does help us because this being a 3-7, we can ask where yellow 3-7 goes in box six. It can only go here, which means that one is the two, is the yellow 2-8. And that one gets the blue flash. So now that one loses the gray and the blue, and that one just loses the gray. So these squares now are a 2-8 and a 4-6. And there must be a one and a nine in this domino. Oh, I tell you what, we also, we worked out there was a five, didn't we, on this Remban line before I ate. So this consecutive digit with that must be a four or a six. So there's no three, seven on that Remban. Oh, if I knew that this was yellow, do I know what color this Remban is? No, I suppose it can go either way. And then whether it goes if it goes one way, it'll be yellow. If it goes the other way, it'll be purple. So we don't know which way that goes. So I don't think, well, if I could rule five out of that square, then I would know it was purple. Hmm, I don't know how to do that. There's a two eight here, so that's not two eight, I see. So that's four six, which means this is two eight. And therefore that gets a blue flash. Ah, that's nice. This yellow 4-6 is going to help us disambiguate these two squares now. That can't be another yellow 4-6, so that must be purple. This must be yellow. Now I have got four purples in row four, 5. So that must be yellow, because that has no opportunity to be a 5. And that's got to be either a 1-9 or a 3-7. Don't know if we can disambiguate that. Um, okay, so now we don't know which is the fourth fourth yellow in row five. Ah, that was nearly very cool. Um, four six four six. So I'm just checking the Sudoku is still working. Have I got all of my? No, I can get the last uh, blue flash digit. Look just by Sudoku, it's got to be exactly here. Okay, does that help? Not really. Um, oh, come on. Ah, yes it does. Where does now one nine go in this box? It's got to go here. And that's purple. That's the last purple, so there's now a five in this domino. We can place it, it must go here. So this digit is yellow, 
and that is 109. Ah, which, which disambiguates the yellows at the start of column one. So that is now a four or a six. This is a one or a nine. Oh, this must be close to cracking now, surely. Um, what's this digit? Maybe that's a sensible question. So we've already got in the row, we've got one nines and two eights. So in theory, I think it's three, four, five. It's not five, three, four, six, or seven. It's not five because the five is here. So now, oh bother. I don't know if we can disambiguate that. No, sorry, that's, <laughs> that's no use either. Do I know what color it is? Um, I know it's not yellow three seven. I don't think I do. I think yellow four six could go here or ah oh no, yellow four six can't go there. Oh this is it. Here you go, look. Yellow down here is looking at that square. So that is purple. So now now what does that mean? Is that actually helpful? I sort of feel like it must be. Yeah, I've got four purples now. So this is there is a yellow cell in this domino. And that's a yellow 4-6. And we can place it by this yellow 4-6. Magic. This is absolute magic. So that's a 5. That is now not a 5. And therefore is a yellow 4-6. Okay. And there's that now oh, that gets us a five down here by Sudoku. Um, now, do we know that? Did, no. Do we know what do we know now? We. Oh no. Um, so I know that this is a yellow and purple pair. I'm looking for a purple. No, I'm looking for a yellow 3-7. Uh, if I knew what that was, I might be able to get that. Or this one. 4-6. Yeah, it's probably just some Sudoku we're missing. That's what I feel is most likely. How can we figure this out? We know what those squares are. We've got a 1-9 here, a 1-9 here, 1-9 in one of those two. Oh no, there you go. One nine, one nine. Purple one nine is in this domino. There's a purple one nine here, which also is in green. Oh, that's telling me those two are the same, which we already know now. So, purple one nine is there. And that means purple one nine is here in the final box of the grid. So these two squares are now acquired yellowness. That square must be a 3, 7 to complete the quote of a row 7. This square must be a 1, 9. Now I've got a 1, 9 pair here and here. I can, oh no, I can't do that. 4, 6, yellow, oh no, yellow 4, 6 is done. Don't look at yellows anymore. It's purples we need. And purples over here and purples over here are decidingly lacking. What about, oh, hang on, I totally forgot about the diagonal. Ooh, yeah, actually this diagonal has got, I've got some digits on it now. I've got, I've got seven digits on it and I've got five yellows and we're looking for a top total. So probably it would suggest we've got to max out the yellow. So what do, what do we get if we max out yellow? So if we max out, if we say yellow, what I mean by that is what happens if we say that yellows are six, seven, eight, and nine, then this would be eight, nine, that's 17, uh, 23, and this one, 32, and that one, 38. And then we'd need 10 more and we've got low digits in those two so they would add up to four we'd need six in these two cells and purple 
and in this yeah purple would be a low digit so this would have to be couldn't be a one so this would be a two three or a four on that well actually that's on that hypothesis which might not be right that does look possible though doesn't it if that's a two three or a four that could be a two three or a four it would therefore be purple it couldn't be a two could it be a three or a four perhaps yeah okay so that might be possible what happens then if yellow is a low if we take the low option for yellow we get three seven uh, eight twelve Wow, but we get two eights in purple in return for the 12, which is 28. Ah, ha, ha, ha. those two squares would have to add to 20. That doesn't work. So now we now know quite a lot. All of a sudden, I know that yellow are high digits. So wherever there is an option for a yellow digit, we take the high option. Wherever there is an option for the purple digit, we take the low option. Now, is it going to... Hang on a minute. Let's just see if it's... Oh, hang on. I want to just... No, that's not working. Oh, it's just not working. I think I might have to do this. I might have to do this longhand, I think. Um, let's, yeah, I, it's probably confused because of how many options I put in the grid. So what do we work out? Yellow were high. So let's find all of the four, six yellows and put six in. Oh, there's another one there. Let's find all the three seven yellows and put seven in. There might be more than that, but I think there's some there. All the one nine yellows and we can put nine into those. Um, all the two eights. Ah, these are the blue flash digits. So they became eights after all of this work. That's an eight as well. That's an eight as well. There we go. Now that's got to be a six. I missed that one. Have I missed any other yellows? Yes, that's got to be a six. That we can remove low options from yellow. They are now impossible and we can fill in all of the low options. This might be quicker just to do it like this for all of the all of the digits that we where we actually just have two options for purple. Uh, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two. We've got to have low options there, so six and seven come out. Six and seven come out here and here. Is this finished? Mm, don't know. <laughs> um, ah, that one's low, isn't it? So that's got to be a one. That, oh, we don't know what that is. That has an option of two high digits. Okay, so how do we resolve this? Do we have to use this diagonal then? We worked out those had to add to six, didn't we? Ah, that can't be a one or a two. And that, I think that had to be a two. Ah, that can't be a two. So that's, that's three or four. Ah, so it's double. Yeah, look at that. The options for these squares in terms of possible low digits are threes and fours so you've got to go double three and that becomes purple as a result of that that gets us this digit at the top that digit that digit these two squares are seven and three. Oh, <laughs> that's not resolved um, what else is this three doing or this three for that matter it's making those two squares have to be fours and ah, nine in the bottom row. Has to be exactly there. Let's put that in, label it yellow. Therefore, this square here is a four. These two squares are two and three. Somehow that's not resolved. Those two squares are three and four. Somehow that's not resolved. That's purple, so that's got to be a one. That's a low digit. This is a two. Oh no, this is a 2-4 pair. That looks... No, it's not quite deadly if I can resolve this. So hopefully we're not miles away from a finish now. This is a 5-9 pair. Oh, look. Yeah, but look, they've got to put a 5 in that, that cell. So that's 5, that's 5, that's 9, that's 7, that's 7, that's 3. That's going to get us involved in the deadly pattern at the bottom. And we've just got... We've got to put a 4 in here and a 9. And yes, I should. You're quite right. I should double click everything. 
and make sure it's the right color because otherwise that would be disappointing. Sevens are yellows, threes are purples, and we should just be left with fives that should be uncolored. And what a magnificent puzzle that is. Tick. Yay. Yay. Hour and ten minutes. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was a bit ambitious starting that with sort of 40 minutes to my dinner, but I didn't know how hard it was. It was hard, I think. I mean, it was absolutely blinding. It's a magnificent puzzle. It's another very long video after, when was it, Wednesday night's two-hour festival. And this one, an hour and ten minute festival. And both puzzles just magnificently clever and awesome. So two to ten, take a bow. Love that one. And thanks very much for watching. I will be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.